In today's video, we're going to be recording audio with Cakewalk by BandLab. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now today I'll be using Cakewalk by BandLab to record audio. I've covered this topic a little bit in my previous video, Cakewalk Basics. If you haven't seen that, then click on the link just here to watch that now. But I'll be going into a little bit more detail today to help you guys get really good quality recordings when you're using Cakewalk. Now, if you haven't been to this channel before and you like this kind of thing, all about DAWs, plugins, gear reviews, that kind of thing, then and please do help me out by subscribing and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notifications about my future videos. Now let's get on with some audio recording. Okay, so here we are in Cakewalk and I've got a guitar in my hand and that's because this is the audio that I'm going to be recording in this tutorial today. But it could be a microphone, a vocal, or it could be something like a synthesizer with its audio jacks plugged into your audio interface. Now the fact that it's plugged into an audio interface is important because I've noticed from previous tutorials in the comments that some of you are not using audio interfaces. You're trying to plug straight into your PC or your laptop. Now you won't get very far recording audio like that. It may be enough just to try out Cakewalk, see if you like the interface etc, but you won't get into any serious recording. So please do make sure you've got an audio interface and I'll be putting some links in the description down below to two or three that I'll recommend to you at a cheap to medium price. Check out any of those and you should be on your way. Now let's get started with some actual recording. So I'll go over here and click on new project and then I'm going to go across to empty project and what that will do is open an empty project. Are you with me so far? Good. Now, we need to check a couple of things before we actually start recording. So I'm gonna to go up to edit up here, click on preferences, and then I'm gonna make sure this orange tab devices is selected here. This will show a list of the audio devices available or your audio interface. Now I happen to have more than one and the ones I have have quite a few inputs on them. You'll just be wanting to make sure that you've got at least one input selected. So I have my mic instrument one selected here and that's fine. So I'll click on okay. And the next thing to add an audio track, we will click on the plus symbol up here and we will have to make sure that we have the correct input selected. Now I only have one, but it's created a stereo input automatically here. It's got stereo set by default. I don't want it to be stereo for an electric guitar. So I'm just going to go down to where it says left here and click on instrument one left. It's fine and click on create. That creates a mono track using that instrument one input. Now, I'm just gonna drag this down so that we can see all the controls associated with that track. And I'm gonna click over here to actually rename it. We'll name it guitar. It's pretty important that you do make sure you name things as you go along, folks, or else you'll get really confused later. And you can even, in Cakewalk, one of its nice features, set an icon for it. So I'm just gonna load an icon and I'll go down and find a nice electric guitar icon. You don't have to do that, but it does make it a little bit easier to navigate. Now, the next thing we'll need to do is make sure that the guitar is uh, set to record. So we hit on this uh, red circle here, and that means it's armed to record. Now, if I play the guitar, you won't be able to hear anything, but I can actually hear it through my headphones because my headphones are plugged into my audio interface. So if you do the same, you'll be able to hear it through your headphones, but we're not hearing any processing that Cakewalk is doing to it. In order to hear that, we'll need to click on this echo button on. Now we'll click that on and you'll play it. And what's happening now is Cakewalk is actually processing the signal. Now, this is where you might get yourself into a little bit of bother because what you might be hearing is your initial sound from the audio interface. And then a split second later, you'll be hearing a kind of an echo. And that's very, very off-putting when you're playing and can make you go out of time, that sort of thing. It's called latency. You'll hear it talked about a lot with home recording or, or any record. Now, in order to adjust the latency to make it smaller, you will have to go up to edit again and go to preferences and this time click on driver settings. And about halfway down under mixing latency, you will see a setting for buffer size. Now for me, this is grayed out. 
This means that I have to actually adjust it from the software which came with my audio interface. And I get to that just by clicking on this ASIO panel here. For you, you may be able to adjust it right in the interface here. Now here's the trick. You want to get this as small as possible. So you want it to be as far over to the left as you can make it so that you really don't hear any echo at all when you're recording. However, if you just simply put it all the way to the left, the likelihood is that your system or your DAW cakewalk will become unstable. You will suddenly drop out in the middle of recording or you'll get pops and clicks on playback. So you do have to play around with this a bit, I'm afraid. It takes a little bit of getting right. You want it as low as you possibly can while the system still stays stable. If you uh, are finding that you, it's popping or it's make st suddenly stopping in the middle of playback, then you're probably just going to have to nudge this up a little more to the right. Now, for some systems, you may find that, the, find that the latency just gets so unbearable that you can't really uh, play it, in which case you're going to have to be looking for other solutions, there are other settings that you can change, which I won't be going into today, I'm afraid, because they are too in-depth. I'll click on Apply and then Close, and that means that this is set up. Now, I'm now playing it, and you should be able to hear the guitar. And for me, there's no discernible latency, so I'm all ready to go. Now, the next thing we will need to do is to set the basic input level. Now, this is the most important thing for you to remember. This will take you all the way through your sort of recording time and your experience and will improve your tracks enormously if you get this bit right. Now, if you're not familiar, here is the meter over here. I'm going to zoom in on that and play the guitar. And you can see these green bars going and up, up, and they make uh, show us where the signal is. Now, you'll notice that the numbers start from low negative numbers up here and go further and further down. So we've got minus 6 down to minus 54. Now, 0, which is right at the top, is the point where you get what is called clipping it's and in the digital world it's a horrible sound it's very it's not warm and fuzzy and nice like clipping kind of was in the old analog days it's a really unpleasant sound you can't get rid of it once you've recorded it so you don't want it at all so never ever ever go above zero in fact, you can stay well below zero in digital recording. Now, what I'm going to recommend to you is some numbers, which I won't go into detail here because I have them in another video all about gain staging, which I'll link to right at the end. But the numbers I'm going to mention to you are really interesting numbers and they are there for a reason. I want you to make sure that when you're playing your song that we're peaking at around about minus 12 here. And that the average of your song, the sort of general level of it, is minus 18. So that's a peak of minus 12 and an average of minus 18. Now, don't get too hung up on this. Your music's going to be different each time, so it's never going to be exactly a peak of 12 and an average of 18. Focus on the peak first. Make sure you're just going up to around about minus 12. And just generally minus 18, minus 20, minus 22 is fine. But keep minus 18 in mind. There is a reason for that number. As I say, that's in my gain staging video. So I'm going to play my guitar a little bit at the kind of level that it is at the song. And it's too low at the, mo at the moment, so I'm just going to turn it up on the actual guitar. I've got some leeway there. Almost there. You see, it's still a little bit bit below minus 12 so I'll go up a bit more that's better isn't it so we're up to minus 12 there on the peak and as you can see the average is just hovering around about minus 18 so as I say don't get too hung up on it it doesn't need to be precise just roughly around about that now I'd actually like to add some effects that I'll be able to hear through my headphones as I'm going to play. And the first effect I'm going to add is something I learned in a previous video, and that's to have a guitar tuner in there. Because in a previous video where I recorded this guitar, I didn't notice until afterwards that it was out of tune. Horrible. So I've got a guitar tuner in my library over here. I'm just going to click on the name for the name of it, which is M Tuner. Now, M Tuner is a guitar tuner by Melda Production. It's free, so I'll be putting a link to that down in the description. Definitely check it out. It's my favorite guitar tuner. And I'm just going to take that and drag it across to my effects chain over here. Now when I play the guitar, 
then I can see I can see whether the, each string is in tune. So I will go ahead and I will tune up that guitar and speed up the video for that process. Okay, so now that I have the guitar in tune, I'm actually gonna go ahead and add a little bit of reverb. Now, I'm gonna add the reverb which comes with Cakewalk. So I'll open up the Cakewalk folder here with my audio effects. Um, by the way, just in case you can't find this, make sure you've got the audio effects tab selected up here. Now I go into the Cakewalk folder and I'm gonna select the Sonatus reverb and drag that across there. Now I happen to know that I rather like the default setting which sounds like this. That's fine for this guitar part. So I've got that all up and ready to go and I am almost ready to actually record, but I wanna set up my click. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm right at the start of the track here by clicking on this button here, the rewind button, and I'm gonna go up to project and click on insert tempo change. I like to do it this way because here I can click on this button here to actually tap the tempo that I want. So I'm just gonna do that roughly now. Okay, so it's come out around about 102 beats per minute. I'll click on it, okay, and that is my tempo. So I'm all ready to record, which I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna leave a bar at the beginning or so just to make sure I give myself some leeway. So let's go. So here we are with the track recorded. I'll just give it a double check by clicking on the play button. And you can see there's a nice healthy kind of wave pattern there, some reasonably sized sort of peaks and things. So it sits rather nicely. Now I'm just gonna ditch the guitar and talk about some basic editing. Okay, so now that my guitar is recorded, I can switch this off here, I can switch the echoing off, and that has everything, including the effects when I play. Now the first thing you might wanna do is actually trim the beginning. You can see there's a little bit of noise there, which if it was a really silent part of the beginning, you wouldn't want there. So I like to drag this all out, make it pretty big, zoom in a little bit like this. And then what you can do is make sure that you've got the smart tool enabled. That's this star symbol up here. I like to have that on most of the time in Cakewalk. And then I can go across and I can drag this across like this. Now you can see that it's jumping in little steps, which if I want to do some fine adjustments, I don't really want. So I'm going to turn the snap off up here. I'll turn that off and I can really just get right in there tight to the beginning of that wave. That will give me a very clean signal and I'll click on play. So you can hear there's absolute silence before it starts playing. Now, the next thing you might wanna do is something like a fade out. So what I'll do is go right to the end here. You've got a natural fade out where I played the chord. But what if we wanted it to fade out to absolute silence in a very, very clean way? Now what you can do here is do a non-destructive fade out. If you go right to the top um, right of the track here, you can drag this over. Can you see the wave is just getting smaller? And I'll move that right over like that. We'll have a listen to that fade out. That gives us a really perfect fade out. You can also do fades at the beginning as well, just in the same sort of way, just like this. Sounds a bit strange, but have a listen. <laughs> now, that is non-destructive, meaning that you haven't actually done it permanently to the wave file at all. You can actually just um, do that kind of thing, move it in and out and get rid of it altogether if you wish. Now, the next thing you might wanna do is actually cut tracks. So. Let's go ahead. There's different ways of doing this in actual fact, but let's choose a point to cut the track here. And uh, what I'll do is use have, make sure my smart tool is on. I'm going to set the cursor to around about here. I'm going to click on, uh, do a right click and just click on split. 
and click on OK, and that splits the track right there. What's interesting about this, and this is why I wanted to show you, is that you can actually move this out now. You could move that section to another place, but again, it's non-destructive. So if I were to now drag the edge out, all of those parts are still actually there. So you're not actually getting rid of stuff where you cut it there. Let's just undo that a couple of times to go back to where I was. And the other thing you can do if you're using a smart tool is actually go over here to where it has the edit tools, uh, long click, long left click on that tool and go down to split. And then you can go across and you can just do lots and lots of splits like that it saves you doing all the, the right clicking and that's a really good way of actually editing your clips you can move things around you can get them in time that's for a different video but i hope you enjoyed this one now the subject of audio recording is indeed massive and we've only just scratched the surface so if you have any questions and remember there's no stupid questions ask in the comments below and myself or someone else will endeavor to help you out now if you like this video please do help me out and hit the like button if you didn't like this video hit the dislike button twice if you like this kind of content then please help subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube and you will get notifications about my future videos and I will see you in the next video. Like one of these two here, you might like to click on one of those. Mm, that one looks good. What about that one? No 